What's going on YouTube? The compact crossover segment is chock full of options, even if many people never make it past RAV4 and CRV. But since you're watching this comparison, we know you're a smart shopper that wants to consider all the options out there. And another excellent choice in the class is the Subaru Forester. So should you pick the longtime favorite Honda CRV or choose the adventurous and somewhat different Forester? Well, that's what we're about to find out. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this comparison, we first want to quickly mention pricing and equipment. Starting with the new CRV, we have the new trim added to the lineup in 2024 known as the Sport L. This model comes standard with the majority of equipment and costs just under $40,000. For the Forester, we have the Touring trim level for the closest match in pricing and equipment. Prices increased by $900 this year, so our total is just over $40,000. By the way, if you want quotes from local dealerships and access to invoice pricing info for these two models or any vehicle, we have a tool on our website to do just that. Check out the link in the description for more information. Now this comparison is being conducted in an objective way. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories, but at the end of the comparison we will sum up with our thoughts and account for that small price difference. Now let's get to it. So as soon as you walk up to these two models, you will immediately notice that they have vastly different design philosophies. For the new CRV, Honda has somewhat changed their design direction and has gone with a simple yet sporty design. Subaru has their own signature look and they are much less apt to make major changes to it. As you can tell, it's going to have the tougher appearance. As far as the front lighting, we also have more differences than one would expect. First off, both the main headlights are LED, but the Foresters are the more premium projector style instead of reflectors. Additionally, they are adaptive, so they swivel when you go around corners at night. The CRV fights back by having LED turn signal indicators, but the Forester has additional LED fog lamps that are not available on the Honda. Finally, getting to continue on to the sides, the Forester comes in about 2 inches shorter than the CRV and both are rocking 18 inch alloy wheels. Heading out back, neither are super aggressive with their designs, and the details are largely the same. We have spoilers up top, exposed wipers, and partially LED taillight clusters. CRV has an LED reverse light and dual exposed exhaust outlets instead of just one on the right side. Now checking out some of the individual odd and end features, both of their mirrors have heating and blind spot monitoring but only the Forester has auto dimming. For those of you interested in towing small trailers, the Forester can handle up to 1,500 pounds versus 1,000 in the CRV. One great thing that both models emphasize is safety, and they back it up with all the active safety features included as standard equipment no matter what trim level you choose. CRV also has a traffic jam assist function, and Forester has rear auto braking. Warranty coverage will be the same between both models, but Honda now extends two years of complimentary maintenance coverage to their customers. So, how functional and feature-rich are the interiors? Well, you're getting ready to find out, but first... If you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now moving things to the inside, I'll first mention that we have standard smart entry systems and remote start built into the key fob in the case of the CRV. Once you open up the doors, again you will find designs that are starkly different from each other. The seats are mostly the same though, both having real leather, 10 ways of power adjustment, memory, and heating. Neither of them offers ventilation at this time. Once we actually climb inside the cabins, the rich designs from the seats continue, especially in the case of the Forester. 
While both models have very solid and well-built cabins, the Forester Touring has more luxury touches, with stitched two-tone leatherette materials used in more places all around the interior. Once you fire the two crossovers up, you'll see a half-digital and half-analog gauge cluster on the Honda, and a traditional cluster on the Subaru, plus a helper display in the middle of the dash. Neither of them will offer head-up displays. Going back to the steering wheels, they are both leather-wrapped, but not heated on the Sport L CRV. Let's move on to the important aspect of interior storage, where Honda almost always excels against all rivals. That will be the case here as well, since the center console is the largest in the class, and the front storage bin is much larger than the Forester as well. Furthermore, the Honda integrates a wireless phone charger up there. Taking a look at the shifters next, both are traditional ones. And when in reverse, we have backup cameras with active trajectory. Many rivals offer 360 degree camera systems, but neither of these two models have that as an option. They do have electronic parking brakes and brake hold. Moving up to the middle of the dashboard, both have dual zone automatic climate systems. And then volume knobs for the audio systems above that. Since this isn't the Sport Touring CRV, we don't have the Bose system, while the Forester has a Harman Kardon setup. Let's go ahead and take a sample. Even if the Honda did have the Bose system, the HK in the Subaru is excellent and would take the score here. Alright, so now let's talk about the infotainment screens. The Subi is rocking an 8-inch screen, while Honda one-ups it literally with a 9-inch screen. Software-wise though, the newer Honda is more sophisticated, with features like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Subaru has those systems, but it requires a physical connection. Although it does also have an integrated navigation system at this price point, which the CRV is lacking. As we wrap up the front of the cabins, there are still several differences left. Both models have auto dimming mirrors, but only the Subaru has the built in Homelink Universal garage door openers. Additionally, the new generation of CRV has opted not to add a panoramic sunroof, which is something the Forester does include. I say panoramic loosely because it's not as big as what one would traditionally consider panoramic, but it definitely opens up about twice as wide as the CRV, no matter how you cut it. Now heading to the rear areas, you probably already know that the CRV is very spacious, but you might not have realized that the Forester is hot on its heels, with leg and headroom numbers that are both under the 5% difference required to score a point. Both these two impress in this regard, and overall comfort is top notch, especially on the CRV with its 8 stage reclining seats. As far as the features back here, both models have rear vents and two USB ports for charging devices. But this new generation of CRV is no longer available with heated rear seats, unlike the Forester. Moving out back, the two crossovers have power tailgates. And once they open up, we again have lots of space. Interestingly, we have 30% more space in the CRV with the seats in place, but only 3% more space with the seats folded. Speaking of folding the seats, the Forester includes convenient buttons to fold them from the cargo area. One last thing worth mentioning back here is that the Subaru has a spare tire under the floor, which is something Honda was not able to package in with the CRV hybrid. All right, we're done with the interiors now, so let's take this fight to the streets. As we head out in the street with these two, the first thing you'll notice are the completely different powertrain strategies. With the new CRV, Honda moved to a structure where most trims are hybrid exclusive, including this Sport L. This two motor hybrid system uses a two liter four cylinder engine combined with electric power to make 204 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque. On the flip side of the coin, the Forester is not available as a hybrid at all, meaning all models will be powered by a 2.5 liter boxer 4-cylinder engine, 
making 182 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque. As you might expect from that power discrepancy, the CRV is notably faster to 60 miles per hour, and the extra torque is especially felt. Alright, and there we go, up to 60 miles per hour. So with this uh, hybrid powertrain, um, they're obviously not making any changes to this for the just the second model yeah. here. This was just fully redesigned. So that means we've got that all new two motor hybrid system. Like we're mentioning in the spec dump, the whole system works together, of course, as you'd expect, with two electric motors, a two liter four cylinder engine as well, for 204 horsepower, 247 pound feet of torque. Those are good numbers for this class of vehicle. I think acceleration feels perfectly adequate it's not going to be like you know super powerful or anything like that all right and there is an acceleration up to about 60 miles per hour in the 2023 forester now like we mentioned at the spec dump no changes to the engine configuration this year. So you still have the 2.5 liter Boxer 4. Um, no upgraded engine options in terms of things that offer more power, but it continues to have class competitive power figures. Transmission wise, again, we have two different systems, but they actually feel pretty similar in practice. The Forester is rocking a conventional continuously variable transmission while the CRV uses an eCVT, which is actually not a CVT, but feels like one as you accelerate. Both models have shift simulations as well. And one of the things I really like about um, this powertrain arrangement is that Subaru makes it feel very zippy. Yeah. Like I noticed that from, straight from a start, the combination of the engine, the throttle response, and the continuously variable transmission, might as well go ahead and mention that, they really work together very well to give you a zippy response right off the line. So we're on a flatter surface there. It gives you a little bit of better perspective on the acceleration. Now you're probably also noticing as we went up to speed there that we were actually kind of going through some gears. Yeah. Because of the way that this hybrid uh, is set up, you don't really have a traditional CVT, but Honda does call this an eCVT just because of the way that it performs. They also have a shift simulation programmed in. After you accelerate and get up to highway speed, you might be wondering how quiet these two are, which is why we took sound level samples at 55 miles per hour to compare them. Even though the new CRV has improved over the previous generation, it is still louder than most things in this class, including the Forester. For reference, a one decibel difference is something that the average adult can discern. Let's go ahead and get our sound level reading going 55 miles an hour. Very solid, 55.7 decibels. Fifty seven decibels even before we started slowing down there is what our sound level reading was sitting at. Now as far as other driving characteristics, neither of them is designed to be sporty per se, but Honda bakes in more emphasis here. The CRV exhibits nice body control and steering that is fast, accurate, and not too light. That's to be expected since the Forester has more baked in off road capabilities, helped with things like X mode. Before we wrap up here, I just want to mention one more thing. We don't really have any good corners to go around or anything, but I do want to mention that the CRV remains um, having one of the better steering setups in the segment. We have a nice responsive setup. As you can see, you get that immediate reaction as soon as you turn off center, and the body control is pretty well maintained. But the big place where a hybrid pays off is the fuel economy. Despite having more power and torque, the CRV hybrid also achieves 8 miles per gallon combined better fuel economy. That will save you a lot of money at the pump over the years. But now that we've gone through everything, let's return to the $581 price difference and account for that. 
Because the CRV is less expensive in this comparison, it will get a half point based on our 2024 scale. So that's it for this super close comparison. It really went back and forth the whole way through. So we think we should talk about who should be your winner and some of the pros and cons. So the Forester should be your winner if you want a little bit of that extra luxury and some of the features that the CRV doesn't offer, such as the panoramic sunroof and the heated rear seats. Also, if you don't want a hybrid, you won't have it with the Forester and you have more ground clearance and more off-road capability. Now the CRV should be your winner if you do want a hybrid uh, because that is what you get on the sport trim levels. It also has a faster zero to 60 and has better handling than the Forester. Additionally, it does have more space. So it has the maximum amount of space. It's really one of those vehicles that is the best at practicality. Additionally, Honda does have a very good reputation for reliability. But we want to know your thoughts down below. Are you going to take the Honda CRV or are you going to take the Subaru Forester? Be sure to let us know your thoughts. Also, I want to remind you guys if you want to get the best price on your new vehicle, you should go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. On there, we have a tool that will connect you with local dealers in your area to get you that best price, as well as access to invoice pricing information. A link is provided in our video description. And we also want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, we want to encourage you to subscribe and join our Car Confections family. If you're already a part of our Car Confections family, thank you so much for your continued support. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive duck seas.